Hello, fellow Rebel Capitals. Hope you're well. So we hear about the housing market being resilient, <laughs> along with the economy and the labor market and whatnot. And it's resilient because these increases in mortgage rates really don't matter because so many Americans have a fixed rate mortgage, 30-year mortgage at 3%, at 4%. So if mortgage rates are going up to 7, 8, 9, 20, who cares? It doesn't impact them at all. Well, let's think about that for a moment. Is a mortgage payment your only expense as a homeowner? Answer, obviously no. Let's go right over to this article from Bloomberg and connect some dots here. You guys will see what I'm referring to. When the homeowners association comes for your home. So we sit there and think about foreclosures being a dynamic that only involves your mortgage payment and the bank. But what we forget about is you can be foreclosed for a lot of different reasons. You could be totally current on your mortgage payment. And if you're not paying your HOA dues, Bye-bye house. That house is going for sale in the market. That's going to increase the supply of, ho of housing stock for sale, which is very, very low. And therefore, an additional 100, 200,000 homes that come, on sale, uh, uh, that come on the market for sale is going to dramatically impact the price, assuming that the demand stays the same. Because as you guys know from watching my videos, demand right now is pretty much at an all-time low. For housing. So usually if you have a hundred, excuse me, a, a million two or a million five homes for sale, if you have something, another, you know, a hundred thousand homes come on line for sale, it doesn't really impact the price because that can be absorbed easily. But when you have the amount of homes for sale, 500,000, 600,000, and the demand is that low at, at historic lows, like I said, if you add another hundred or 200,000 now, Okay, this time it makes a difference in the overall price. And as you guys know with housing, price is set at the margin. So the prices for the existing homes go down. That impacts the price of the other 140 million homes that are not for sale. But the point is, and we're going to go through this. We're, we're sitting here, and I'm, I'm guilty of this just as much as anyone, that you get hyper-focused on the mortgage rate or the mortgage payment and you forget about all these other payments that have skyrocketed lately, including HOA payments, taxes. How about insurance costs? How about maintenance costs? These are all costs that go into a home that if you can't afford them, you get to a point where you could lose your home as a result. And that could be another home that's on the market for sale. Let's keep going through here. They tell this story of, uh, some gal that calls Jose Mendoza to know that she wasn't about throwing people out on the street. We want to help you, she said in a voicemail. Still, his family had to leave. I want you to know your house has been foreclosed, she said. She told Jose that the house his family had been living in for seven years, the house that he said he had never missed a mortgage payment on, and that he was almost done paying off the house, never missed a mortgage payment. He had a 30 year fixed rate. Why should Jose care about mortgage rates going to seven or 8%? He's not refinancing. He's fixed at 3%. Obviously that didn't save his house. So it had been sold right underneath him. She said that she was calling on behalf of the new homeowner. Jose thought it was a scam. The punchline is he realized it was actually true. And so what this article is about is how we're seeing this wave of foreclosures across the United States as a result of HOAs foreclosing on people for not paying their dues, not paying their fees, not paying their fines, you name it. And look at this first chart we see how big of a problem this has or could be in the future. It looks at the number of Americans that are living 
in condos or in housing developments where there's an HOA that has gone up to almost 80 million, 80 million. And now it's actually very difficult to find the data, but I was able to pull up HOA fees, a chart of HOA fees that stopped in 2015, but you can see the trend. And I can almost assure you this trend will have continued. And especially over the last couple of years when we've had inflation peak out at 9%, I'm sure H and you guys can tell me in the chat, let me know. You can comment on this video and tell me if HOA fees have gone up in your local area. But look at this chart from Trulia. So this orange line indicates the average HOA fee, but it also goes over the average home price. So you would think that, oh, well, if home prices are going up, sure, the HOA is going to go up. No big deal, George, who cares? But what we can see is even when prices are going down, represented by this blue line uh, from, call it 2008 to 2012, what did HOA fees do during that time frame? They did not go down. They went up. And like I said, this stops at 2015, but <laughs> with the inflation that we have had over the past two or three years, I would imagine that the ratio between home price and HOA fee is even more out of whack than it was in this chart, even though home prices have gone up substantially. And let's compartmentalize for a moment. We've got the mortgage. That might not be a problem for some people, but then you've got inflation reducing their purchasing power so they have less of their paycheck that can actually go to the mortgage even if it's not moving. Therefore, that makes that mortgage payment more of a burden, even though that interest rate might not impact them directly. Let's look at another bucket. We talk about the HOA fees. If your HOA is taking your, your fee from $300 straight up to $500 or $600 over the span of the last couple of years, for some people, that three, four, five hundred dollars $500 payment is the difference of them making their mortgage payment and not. Or they could just forego that payment, then they've got to worry about the HOA foreclosing on them, just like their bank would. Let's look at property taxes. I know from firsthand experience that the county will foreclose on people for not paying their property taxes. Why? Because when I first started buying real estate back in 2012 when I retired, those are the homes that I bought first. I went right down to the auction, to the courthouse steps. In fact, the very first day, I bought six houses, six houses. All of them had been foreclosed on for people not paying their property taxes. Now, I guess it's good that you wouldn't have to worry about getting foreclosed for not paying your home insurance, but you can see that as people's purchasing power goes down and down and down, as a result of inflation, there's many, many ways that they can lose their home even though their 30-year fixed rate mortgage is fixed. So this is another dynamic. This is another metric that we really need to pay attention to when we're trying to assess the probabilities of housing prices going up or down in the future, always adjusted for inflation. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. As always, make sure that you're standing up for freedom, liberty, free market capitalism. And if you want to see more of the very recent important stories that we've covered on this channel, Josh will put them in a playlist right about here. And we'll see you in the next video.